Welcome to your Bite Size Basics session, designed for seniors to improve your digital skills, brought to you by Bulletinet in partnership with the BT Group. I'm Lizzie Green, and I'm a Workplace and Education Inclusion Consultant at the charity Abilitynet. And this is a short video focused on artificial intelligence. Let me introduce you to Abilitynet. At AbilityNet, we are a charity passionate about digital inclusion, ensuring that no one is left behind in a digital world. We help people age 65 plus improve their digital skills in partnership with the BT Group. At AbilityNet, we support older people and disabled people with technology. We have a helpline on 0300 180 0028 where anyone older or disabled can call for advice on technology. We have an amazing team of over 450 volunteers across the UK, and they give up their free time in order to help older and disabled people at home with their technology. In partnership with BT, we are offering digital skills training in selected regions across the UK. We also have a whole host of free online resources to help you make the most of the digital world. These include fact sheets, free webinars and a handy tool called My Computer My Way that has a library of over 500 guides offering step by step instructions to make your device easier to use. So what is AI? So AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. Computer systems that can perform tasks that often required human intelligence. And this includes things like learning, reasoning, problem solving, perception, language understanding, and even decision making. This artificial intelligence can mimic or simulate human cognitive functions. So lots of people have worries about AI. Some think, some think that it might lead to job losses, right through to others thinking that robots might take over the world. There are some concerns that it could be used by criminals, especially with things like deep fake videos where people's voices and faces can be replicated by the machine. And while we understand that some of these things might be concerning, no one can predict the future. And we do have to be careful about some of the things that AI can do. But the extinction of humankind by the machines has been rubbish by some experts, so we should be OK. So there are lots of things happening that already use AI. We just might not know that that's what they're using and that AI is involved. It's already in our smartphones for things like face recognition or asking Siri or Google or Alexa to do something for us. It's in our smart devices at home. It can generate adverts based on our preferences. It's used in air traffic control at airports. And it's used in robots that filter out nasty rubbish that get into the recycling. Not a job I think any human really wants to do. AI is also being used to help with lots of medical and health based things. So devices that are used to help detect when someone has a fall wearable health monitoring devices, voice activated devices that give us reminders for tasks or taking our medication, predictive responses when communicating via text messages, being able to predict the words that we might be typing, voice to text software, allowing us to speak out what we want to say instead of having to type it on a keyboard, Smart home devices that can help us control our lights and our heating without us having to get up and physically move. And health service chatbots for diagnosis and consultations, although it must be noted that these aren't very widely used yet. So AI is a natural progression and it helps us from move on from just searching for things on the internet. It means we no longer have to search through millions of millions of options when we need to try and find something. Now, ChatGPT was the first app and probably the one that we are most aware of when it comes to AI. But now search engines like Google and Microsoft Edge have built their own. So Google's is still in development at the moment, but the Microsoft Copilot is now live. And if any of you want to try any of these out, you can search for them on an internet browser. 
So most of these AIs are free to use, but you might need to set up an account to use them. And to do this, you will need to have an email address. If you want to give one a try, uh, you can make an account on one of the AIs that we've mentioned on the previous slide. And we've given you some examples here of things that you might want to try and use it for. So you could write a complaint letter to your local council, ask it to suggest a recipe, maybe for something like a chocolate cake. You could search for information about your favourite celebrity, or you could ask it how to claim a pension. Just some things that you need to be mindful here when you're using the AI is that it will default to using US American English, but you can ask it to complete a task in British English for it to give you the answer back in British English. You also need to be mindful if you're searching for something like a pension, be sure to be asking about UK pensions. So how can I claim a pension in the UK if that's where you live? The more specific you can be with your questions, the more specific an answer you'll receive back from the AI. And remember, you can continue to ask follow up questions to your original question if it's not giving you quite what you're looking for in your answer. So I just wanted to show you an example of what an AI search might look like. So on the screen, we have an image taken from ChatGPT. We asked the AI how to make a chocolate cake and the AI has responded by giving us um, a list of ingredients and a set of steps to follow. If this, not, if this is not the kind of cake that we are looking for, we could ask it again or the measurements on here, as I said, is defaulted to American. It's given us the measurements in cups. And in the UK, we use grams. So we could ask the chat GPT to change the measurements of the recipe to grams for us. So that brings us to the end of our mini bite sized session brought to you by AbilityNet in partnership with BT. If you need any further digital skills support, please call the helpline on 0300 180 0028 or email us at inquiries at abilitynet.org.uk. Thank you.